Hi guys, welcome to another video. I hope everyone had a good Christmas or a good holiday, whatever you guys were celebrating. We had a really good Christmas and we spent New Year's up in North Wales because we're looking at that as options for possibility of moving there one day. So we had a really nice New Year's Eve together, that was really good. We saw lots of things, loads of places, um, <clears throat> so that was fun. Sorry if my voice sounds a bit off, I've got like a cough, sort of cold, sore throat. It's weird, like it's usually due in the morning and then by the night time I feel alright and then I wake up the next morning with a really bad cough again, so I'm just taking some medication to try and pass it before it gets worse. So today's video is about sensory overload mostly, but just in general about how to cope with full-time working or working in general when you do have special needs or a disability. Um, my whole working life I have found working difficult, really tricky, even when I was undiagnosed with things and I was doing like work placements or um, I was doing like part-time work and things like that. The job that I'm currently in has probably been the hardest, well not the hardest in terms of um, causing meltdowns and things like that but in terms of managing it daily and struggling with it the current job that I'm in is kind of like that. So when I used to work in the school I used to really struggle with that the first couple of months and then I got into the swing of it and then when I had to leave it was like oh I don't want to leave because like I don't want to start somewhere new and you know you have to get used to everything again but yeah the school was really hard I'm not sure why because it was structured and it was like five days a week I knew what shift I was doing I think it's because schools are really social places there's loads of people in the classroom with you there's people you have to deal with on a daily basis um and it was all sort of face-to-face -face confrontation and talking, like there was no email in or whatever, like if you had an issue you went and spoke to the person, which I found quite hard. But eventually I did settle there and it was really good. My current job causes me anxiety more than like meltdowns and stuff, like I have touched on it before. But it's a very rigid sort of job, shift pattern job. I'm fine with the shift patterns and like I don't mind doing shift work or anything like that like I I get used to it as long as I know what I'm doing like that week I'm fine um, but for some reason this job causes me quite bad anxiety but I do think it's because my anxiety has, has got worse over the last couple of weeks especially with driving and things which I've touched on before so I'm not sure if that's like a factor really but yeah in terms of managing with work obviously it hit it is hard working full-time even part-time when you have um, like special needs or a disability. I have autism as my primary diagnosis along with sensory processing disorder and um, comorbid learning difficulties and disabilities with that. So um, it can be tricky in a workplace to manage those things and kind of balance your life and work life balance like I do find my home life and work life really hard to balance between each other especially because I'm doing shift patterns like I just feel like I don't have time for everything and I'm pretty much masking all of the time so that's tricky like when you kind of have to hide your disability or special needs and I don't do it because I'm ashamed of having autism or special needs or anything like that it's just something that I've I'm used to like I've been doing it my whole life so it's hard not to do it and obviously that becomes very draining and really exhausting to do all the time so basically how I manage um, I don't tend to manage it very well like I don't have a plan or structure in place to how I manage it I kind of just push through and cope with it when I do and I do have moments where I just really struggle with it and um, resort to sort of unintentional self-interest behaviour during like mini meltdowns from my autism or I take some time out with some sensory toys or sensory items go for a walk kind of give my myself space to regulate and calm down like watching YouTube videos reading like anything that helps you really if you can find something that you like to kind of calm you down and refocus you on things and sometimes it's just reminding yourself that you don't have to be perfect and you do actually have struggles and it's not always going to be easy. Um, I do think employees knowing that you have 
these issues can be helpful but then I can also see how they're not helpful. I'm not really sure how I feel about it at my current work. Um, they accidentally found out that I was autistic and had other difficulties but mainly the autism. Occupational health no beforehand but like before you start the job but they don't tell your employee. Um, my employee found out because of the way I was like in training and stuff like that and I think they like the work do try and be helpful with you but when you don't feel like you need the help or you don't feel like it's a big deal and people make it a big deal um, that's what I'm really struggling with at the moment. I don't know what my plans are for the future like um, it's quite a common thing to, for me to change jobs quite quickly and quite easily like I haven't found something that I've stuck with yet. Um, I do believe if I was still in Oxford I would still be in my school job um, but also I had to leave there because we were relocating to Wales and Oxford was too much to live but yeah I just haven't found anything yet that I'm stuck with. I do think full time working is really difficult for me but because of money issues I can't really not work full time so I am trying to think of in the future like jobs that I could do at home like work from home like maybe getting my photography going again um, doing things like dog walking any online stuff maybe opening an online store with stuff related to autism and special needs on my channel um, but obviously those have to be sustainable financially but they also help like when we have children because I do want to spend time with children at home and kind of like ran like just going off on a tangent now so apologies for that but yeah like coping with full-time working and sensory stuff can be hard especially with a diagnosis of autism or any disability but i think it's knowing what triggers you knowing why you're struggling with something like with full-time working um sorry if the lighting's changing it's like really sunny outside and then it's not sunny like it keeps going dark and then the sun comes out again but um yeah, it's like knowing what works for you and what doesn't, kind of maybe write down what you think triggers you at work and how you could solve those. If there's someone at work that you trust, speak to them about it. Maybe take breaks or times out to handle that. If you do have a sensory need that needs to be met constantly, like you need to stim constantly or um, have fidget toys and stuff with you at work, just tell someone um, in management or who's at work all the time that can approve that for you and tell them that you need that to concentrate otherwise you can't cope because um, these are all protected under the Equality Act in the UK I'm not sure what it's like in other countries but you're protected with all, um, all of these things so they have to make reasonable adjustments at work to help you cope um, and really when you're coming home just making sure you have time for yourself and kind of detach from work and have time to focus on other things other than work because at the minute I feel like all I do is think about work and I'm at work all the time and I think partly it's because alongside my work I have to do this thing called like AWIF to register um, with Social Care Wales which has to be completed within six months of starting employment and then you have to do a level three like diploma in health and social care which I'm really struggling to accept at the minute because I am um, did a level 3 extended diploma in health and social care when I was in college a couple of years ago but apparently there's a new qualification now that you have to do that even though you've done that and I have a level 7 currently after being at uni and stuff so I find it really difficult to accept that I have to go back and do like a level 3 alongside working full time when I've already got that and it's not going to benefit me so like I'm one of those people that um have that very black and white thinking like if I don't understand why I have to do something I really struggle to do it so I'm just trying to do that work at the minute but it's also trying to balance it because when you are doing a full-time job all the time where do you have the time to do a level 3 diploma and like your AWIF registration stuff when really most people do that by itself not whilst they're working full-time as well like it's like having another full-time job um, and on my days off I don't want to be doing stuff related to work because I feel like that's constantly what work, like constantly thinking about work. So I'm not really coping with it very well at the moment. Um, I do find full time working very hard and I know a lot of you have said before that you do as well. I'm hoping that over the next couple of months, like especially this new year, um, I work on finding a good work balance for me, finding a career 
that'll work for me trying to plan and put things into place to work from home um i'd love to do things like childminding but because we're renting and don't have our own house yet that's not really something you can do in a rental so we're trying to save to buy as soon as possible and just thinking about our future and everything ahead so being an adult is a scary thing but yeah if you guys have experiences of work and how you manage sensory overload or how you manage your disability at work then please let me know in the comments i'm always happy to read them um and also put any video suggestions you have for the next couple of weeks in the comment section as well thanks for watching guys i hope you have a lovely start to 2020 and i'll see you soon bye